it takes a real commitment and it takes a passion for it. I mean, that's tied right in with the willingness. And the key thing is, if you listen to all those tapes and teachings, the central thing will be is that our mind is it. So that anything or anyone we see that even seems to represent clarity is just a symbol in our own minds. That we have called forth that witness from from in our own minds. It eliminates the whole trip of, of the teacher, the pupil, the guru, the follower, the, all these things that the ego, I mean that's another part when as Rhonda is experiencing when she's feeling a real strong draw to step out of everything, the things are coming up like, what is going on? Is it a cult? Is it this? Is it that? You know, well, instead of feeling defensive in this and that, you can say, well, well, what's a cult to you? Well, a cult is where there's a, a central figure that's authoritative, that, that has followers, that gives orders, and so on and so forth. The course, and if you really listen to the tapes over and over with the teachings, the whole point is bringing, returning power, bringing empowerment to my own mind. There isn't a central figure. People has, can, the ego can seem to hold figures up and say they are the authorities of this religion or the course or this or that, but that's not the teachings. More, the more you really look at what the course is saying, it's not saying that there is a figure outside your mind that is the savior. It's saying that if you experience clarity, that you are calling witness in, in your own mind to that clarity. That says a lot. That should be a powerful witness to your mind of where it's at. The ego will have all this evidence to, I'm not getting this, and look at all the seeming conflict I'm going through and the fear and everything. But, you know, if, if you're hearing clarity, if things are making sense in these ideas, whether you're reading them from a book, whether they seem to be coming out of someone's mouth or what, then that should, it should say, yes, this is a symbol for what I really want. I will choose this as my evidence for how my awakening is coming. Well, profound clarity is all I can describe it as. You know, and, and what, you know, David symbolizes for me my own willingness. Because I know that, it's, at some level I know, that, that I, have, I have brought forth. David as a witness to my mind's willingness to go very deep because there isn't anything apart from my mind essentially I was just going to say that <clears throat> and I appreciate you bringing that up because I've needed, I've needed some evidence for my willingness and so I'm real glad that um, you and David and and you, Mary, and it's like, you know, it's just an outpicturing of that. And it's like I need to hang on to something that, you know, I, you know, I am making progress, if you will, or I, it's like I need something to hang on to. I feel like I'm drawing witnesses um, as never before to my own heart's desire to just be very passionately and uncompromisingly committed to awakening. And that's what's being reflected back to me in these letters that David was referring to, that we're beginning to, you know, receive from various corners of the country, you know. But again, it's, you know, it, it, that is simply a witness to where my mind is and the willingness that's there, and the desire that is there. That, to me, that's the time collapse, too, that one of the fellows in the letters was writing, had been in this community, and had all these things, and what about this instance, and what about this instance, and what about this instance, and this instance, and this woman wrote back this beautiful letter, just bringing it back to the present, and talking about all these associations, perceptual associations, and everything, and and saying, I can't, I can't relate to all those little separate specifics in this and that. You know, it was just very gently, very clearly, very joyously, I mean, very humorously just expressing in this letter, you know, that 
I can't see you like that. I, she says, I'm seeing everyone is a projection of my own mind. I cannot blame or feel victimized by a master teacher or Who by a, or this one. That This is a friend in Canada that we mm. has been writing to a number of people. Mm. And it, it was just, oh, okay. just wonderful. I mean, I'm just like, oh, the heart chords are just dancing as I'm just reading the letter. The clarity, mm -hmm. just the beautiful clarity, didn't get in to try to, I could have said this, or I should have said that, and on and on and on, but it just brings it back to the present moment. It's that quantum leap that the Course keeps talking about, which takes it away from this long, long linear process, like you're saying, where I'm 75, will I still be asking this? I mean, that can, can get depressing mm -hmm. to even project it out over that long. It could just seem like, oh, the struggles that I seem to have had, if I mm -hmm. multiply those and I string that out, I don't, oh, that can just seem overwhelming. But it's that collapse to the instant. I was just going to say, instant. if I look at it as a, <clears throat> as a collapse, that's just the word I was going to use, there shouldn't be any struggle. You see, and then there should be no projection into the future in terms of time or looking back at the past, but it really... Regardless of when we meet or how we meet or whatever is just part of the flow, yeah. and we won't be thinking in terms of that. Yeah. But Remember that idea you and I were talking about not too long ago of, you know, it's like we look, we have have thought that in looking to the past we could be so much smarter and wiser and responsible mm -hmm. about the present and the future. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I was thinking of that as David was speaking and saying, you know, you're looking to the past and projecting that into the future, and, it's, you know, it's going to be another 35 or 45 years or whatever before I get it. it. Again, it's an example of thinking that I can look to the past, believe something from the past, and, and let it teach me something that I want to know about the present and the future, and it doesn't, doesn't work, you know. It's, it, that's that's also um, looking to the Holy Spirit and saying, you know, I can't really rely 100% on you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got to look to my past some, and I've got to do something about this and be smart about mm -hmm. the present and the future based on what I know, well, I know, from the past. Exactly that. Uh, Edie was a wonderful witness to this, um, having um, been with her family as um, at the death of her father. And um, she knew she wanted to be an instrument of peace, and just over and over again as things came up, what she kept hearing was, be here, just be here. And she said essentially she didn't make any decisions. She just felt like she was being orchestrated to go here, do this, you know, come to the funeral home, um, and that what she was to be was just to be this loving presence throughout this whole experience. And um, it was wonderful listening to her share about the, the joinings that she had with people, even to the fact of um, when she walked in the funeral home and they were all standing in a line, brothers and sisters, and, like, the resistance that she had to that, she just, like, just total resistance like she wanted it to be real informal and just people just standing around talking and so talk to someone about it and they said well this is how everybody gets to talk to everybody and they just they just want to see us so she thought well all right I can let go of that too and just kept surrendering and um but she said that that, that really touched me it's just like in that this is the invitation it's like be here now be in the moment and listen. That's all that's asked.